Alfie Phillips was born on the 26th of May 2019. He had a cheeky grin and was full of energy and life. He was into everything and interested in everything. He melted the hearts of everyone he met. His father was Sam Phillips and his mother was Sean Hedges. They were living together in Kent. Now, after falling pregnant with Alfie and faced with a life-changing decision, Sean made several appointments to have an abortion but did not go through with the procedure. During pregnancy, she saw little of her family as her mom moved to Devon with her husband, while visits to her father became infrequent. Sean also considered adopting Alfie to another family but eventually decided to keep the baby. He was a normal healthy baby who grew up and thrived during the early months of his life. The family's progress was closely monitored by a specialist at the local NHS centre and at no stage did they notice any injuries to Alfie. In the January before lockdown, Sean said she felt lonely and isolated having not seen Sam for a while but she voiced hopes of securing council housing to give Alfie a good chance in life. Sam, Alfie's father, already had two children. He became involved with Sean in 2017. While living in a caravan his mum bought for him. He met her shortly before her 21st birthday and by the end of the year moved her into his home. But their relationship soon deteriorated and rows would flare up and they were asked to move off the land following a disturbance. Sean then started a relationship with Jack Benham, though she did not tell Sam or Jack that she was seeing the other. Jack was in a long-term relationship with his former partner, with whom he had two daughters. But after the pair split, he moved into a caravan at the back of his parents' home. In the summer of 2020, when his family met Sean, they were told she had been living with her father. As summer turned to autumn, Sean started staying with Jack more and more, prompting Alfie's father to suspect she was seeing another man. He was well aware she had met someone he believed to be called Jack during her spell working at a pub opposite the Holiday Park. His suspicions were confirmed when on her 24th birthday, he found her with Jack at her friend's home. Sam had a huge row, but then they soon reconciled. However, from then on, Xi'an stayed away more frequently from Sam. During this time, she claimed to be at her grandmother's home and then at her father's house. And although Sean would occasionally stay with Sam, she would go off again, always taking Alfie with her to Jack's caravan. And by November 2020, she was effectively homeless. She divided her time between staying with Sam in his caravan and staying with Jack, who was living in a caravan in the garden of his parents' house. Sean herself had no history of assaulting or mistreating Alfie, and Alfie was generally well cared for. But alongside that, she only really cared for herself. She had the opportunity to provide Alfie with a stable home with her mother in Devon, but instead she took him with her while she moved between her two partners on an almost daily basis. She took cocaine regularly and did so in front of Alfie. Sean spent a substantial amount of her income on drugs. Jack also had developed a major crack cocaine habit. It was the drugs that had brought the two of them together and most of their time in each other's company was spent taking drugs. Additional evidence showed that Jack did not have a cot or essential items needed to care for a young child in his caravan. Blood was also found on the child's sleep suit and bedding, which was later confirmed to be Alfie's. On October 19th, Sean and Jack exchanged messages about Alfie screaming most of the night. Jack said, oh, he's just a crybaby, ignore him. Further signs of mistreatment became apparent throughout the year, with Sam becoming concerned Alfie looked tired and pasty. And then, shortly after Sam's birthday, Sean formally packed her belongings and left him but continued to say she wanted to make their relationship work and occasionally returned. Sam and his mum would notice bruises on Alfie's ears, which Sean attributed to him falling down the stairs. When asked about the ear's unusual dark colour and suggested it looked as if someone had twisted Alfie's ear, Sean stayed silent. But even Jack's mum pointed out bruises which ran a straight line on Alfie's eye. However, 
Jack brushed off her concerns, claiming their dog Belle had knocked the toddler into a doorframe. Jack's parents eventually noticed Sean was staying in his caravan five or six nights a week. There was another occasion where Alfie had bruising to his fingernails and they brushed it off as he caught his fingers in the dog gate. So that's the history of the family and how the events developed. Now I'm going to tell you about the murder itself. This is pretty brutal. I hope you're ready. The main assaults upon Alfie took place in the caravan during the night of the 27th of November 2020. A number of witnesses told police that Alfie was well and in good spirits. When he entered the caravan with Sean and Jack in the early evening of the 27th, in the course of that night, Alfie sustained approximately 50 injuries from the assaults all over his body. There were cuts, abrasions, bruises, hemorrhages, soft tissue injuries and fractures. These included complete fractures of the radius and ulna bones in his arms just above both wrists. These were caused by a brutal combination of squeezing and bending of Alfie's arms. How does that work? If you bend your arm like this, I mean it's whatever, but if you were to bend your arm that way to the child and keep going and going and going and going, I can only imagine what that pain must have been. The bones were described by the medical expert as having been shattered by the force of the assault. As a small child's bones are resilient and pliable, it would have required a great deal of force to produce this result. How many of you have children? Sometimes they fall, sometimes they hurt themselves, but they're quite resilient. So for you to hurt a child like this, there must have been excessive force. Alfie also suffered the complete fracture of his tibia and fibula of his left leg. Again, the bone is shattered and again, this would have required the application of a great deal of force. Still further, Alfie's sternum was fractured, something that would have required a great deal of force to achieve. And he sustained several further fractures to his ribs, probably from crushing. He sustained a number of serious injuries from impacts that were directed at his face and his eyes. His head was gripped very tightly, which resulted in heavy bruising to much of his skull. A hand had roughly been placed over his mouth, smothering him, no doubt, to stop his crying. This was done with such force that the frenulum, the skin between his upper lip and his nostrils, had been Alfie had teeth sunk into different parts of his body, including his arm, his back, and one foot, in each case causing wounds and in the latter causing a fracture to his toe. These injuries were the result of what can only be described as a frenzied attack. It is impossible to be sure how long the attack lasted, but given the number of different injuries that were inflicted on Alfie, it must have lasted a considerable time. The medical evidence also showed that Alfie suffered a number of injuries some 72 hours before he died. The medical evidence also showed that Alfie had quite a few injuries even before the 27th. These consisted of a number of relative minor rib fractures, which were caused by excessive squeezing and the fracture of a bone in his foot, almost certainly caused by someone deliberately standing on it. Police believed these injuries were caused by Jack Benham as a result of inappropriately rough or bad-tempered treatment of Alfie. The injuries suffered by Alfie that night were so numerous and so serious that the medical experts were not able to say which of them had been the immediate cause of Alfie's death. He had so many fractures, so many cuts, so many bruises, any one of them could have taken his life. It's absolutely clear, however, that the cumulative effects of these vicious and brutal assaults resulted in his death. It must have taken some considerable time to inflict these injuries on Alfie, and the pain and fear that he must have suffered is almost unimaginable. Jack and Sean were the only two people in the caravan that night with Alfie, and they both continually lied about what happened. But it's clear they planned to spend the night taking drugs and drinking. During the course of the evening, Jack smoked a gram of crack cocaine, and Sean snorted half a gram of cocaine. Together, they also drank a litre bottle of whiskey and a bottle of rum. Jack drank more than Sean. At some time before midnight, he had exhausted his supplies of drugs, so he pestered Sean to make a trip to his dealer to buy more. She tried to get the drugs, but they weren't available, and returned empty-handed. Then, at some point during the night, 
Alfie woke up and was crying and distressed, at least in part because he was teething but also because of the injuries that had been inflicted upon him earlier that week. Alfie became an inconvenience and an irritation. They were both angry with him for interfering with their night's drinking and drugs and were annoyed by the noise he was making. Jack was frustrated that it had not been possible to obtain more drugs and because of this he decided to teach the boy a lesson like he had anything to do with it. The injuries were inflicted in an attempt to control and discipline the child. Jack took the lead and inflicted most of the injuries including the main fractures. He was the stronger of the two. He had the worst temper, he had consumed more alcohol that night and he was the one who was most frustrated that the drugs had run out. But they were both involved and assisted and encouraged each other. Xian was responsible for at least one of the teeth marks sinking into Alfie's body. Once the assaults were over, she placed Alfie in bed with the two of them and they went to sleep. At that stage, neither of them had any idea that the assaults had murdered the boy. At some point, whilst they were asleep next to them, Alfie died. They then woke up around 11.30 the next morning and they immediately realized Alfie was dead. They were shocked and horrified and then they ran to Jack's parents' house for assistance. But by then, it was already too late. They did not call 999 but that was only because they thought that the best thing to do was to get help from Jack's parents. His mother, Joan Benham, made heroic efforts to resuscitate Alfie but it was too late. He was already dead. Now, Sean was utterly devastated by Alfie's death. Okay. Okay. There's some injuries on Alfie which can't be accounted for. Okay, so, so the bruising to his eye, okay, is a deformation with one of the wrists. And I sort of also told us from an x-ray, just wait a moment, okay, that there's potentially an old fracture to one of the arms as well, which might, which may have required some sort of hospital treatment at the time, but they can't find any records to show that it has been taken. Okay, that's so what we've been told at the moment time. Now listen to me, I'm not saying that you have done anything at all, but listen to me, just, just let me finish. Okay, so it's 2.33. What well, I have to do at this moment in time is I have to arrest you on suspicion of, of child neglect. Okay, just listen to me. So you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Don't mention one question. Some states trying to court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Okay, I know what you're saying and I appreciate this isn't great timing or anything like that, but we obviously have got, you know, we have to, have to do an investigation around it. But they both immediately took steps to cover up responsibility. They lied about what happened in the caravan and maintained their lives through police interviews and at trial. When police quizzed Sean about bruises on her dead little boy, she replied, are you joking? What do you mean injuries? I have no idea. At first, they both claimed that Alfie had died as a result of a tragic accident because he was trapped by Jack's legs under a duvet. But at trial, it became clear from all the medical evidence that this explanation was not credible. They then turned on each other and blamed the other for the assaults. In Sean's case, she said that these injuries must have been inflicted by Jack when she was away to go and get the drugs that she couldn't get. And Jack said that no, it was Sean that did this. And she did it whilst he was in a deep and drug-fueled sleep in bed next to her and Alfie in the caravan. And of course, neither of them was telling the truth. But you could take the view that this crime would never have taken place if they weren't under the influence of drugs, which had become the main focus of their lives. So when they were in front of the judge at trial, he was thinking about sentencing, but he took the following information into consideration. You see, Xian was 24 years old at the time, and she was still somewhat immature for her age. She was easily led. She had no previous convictions of any sort. The judge accepted that she adored Alfie and until these events had tried to look after him as well as she could. These are the judge's remarks. That statement I fully disagree with. When you're going back and forth, you don't care about the child. You see, Sean was actually born in 1996 and her parents split when she was nine. She was the youngest of three siblings. She attended Chartham Primary School and later she went to a school in Canterbury while her relationship with her father was sporadic. She had a troubled youth having been the victim of serious sexual assaults by an acquaintance when she was 13. Through her teens, she suffered depression, anxiety, panic attacks and mood swings. After turning 16, she worked at Park Holidays. It was here she met Sam, with whom she had her only child. 
This and other experiences had a long-term adverse effect on her mental health. Since then, she had a somewhat rootless and chaotic life. Although her mother, grandparents, and Sam's parents were willing and able to provide her with support. And at some point, she did go to see a psychiatrist for help and he diagnosed her with borderline personality disorder, anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress and stated that these symptoms significantly impacted her upon her vulnerability. The judge was reading all this out during the trial and he did take into account her history, the aforementioned mental health issues, but he believed this mitigation was limited. Her mental health difficulties did not explain, let alone excuse, her conduct on the night of Alfie's death. She was not dominated physically by Jack. He did not abuse her. At the time, she was not suffering a mental health crisis. Her mental health history was previously when she was a teenager, somewhat a decade before. She chose to take cocaine and willingly played her part in the assaults that night. The vulnerability and the mental health difficulties that she suffered had only a very minor impact upon her culpability. As for Jack, the judge said the injuries were inflicted in an attempt to control discipline and punish this child. I am sure that you, Jack, took the lead and inflicted most of the injuries, including the main fracture. You are the stronger of the two. You have the worst temper. You had consumed more alcohol that night and you were the one who was frustrated the drugs ran out. Then when the judge addressed them both together, he said it must have taken considerable time to cause the almost unimaginable suffering which resulted in Alfie's death. The injuries suffered by Alfie that night were so numerous and so serious that the medical experts were not able to say which of them immediately caused the death. But it is clear though that when you put all the abuse together, this resulted in his death. It must have taken some considerable time to inflict these injuries. So, as for the sentencing, Sean, for the murder of Alfie, was sentenced to life in prison. And taking into account of all the factors, the minimum term she would need to serve is 19 years. Jack, for the murder of Alfie, was sentenced to life in prison. Taking account of all the factors for him, the minimum term for him that he will have to serve 23 years. Finally, in a victim impact statement by Sam, Alfie's father, he said, after the trial, we still feel we deserve answers. I will never know the truth about what happened. I never got to hear him say his first proper words. I never got a conversation with him. I was robbed of the opportunity to see him grow up. And you got to ask yourself, what was all this for? What was the point? Maybe they didn't realize what they were doing as they were numb from all the drugs and the alcohol. But as a parent, it's Shion's job to know. I mean, just look at this image of her. She is monged out of her mind. She has no idea what is going on. Neither one of these deviant sperm anomalies should ever be allowed out of prison. Comment, tell me what you think.